Welcome back, fellow Res Heads. I'm Danny Riggs, and today I would like to kick off a new series here on RevsTube that I would like to call Res History. And in this series, I'd like to give you guys some background information about every residence release. And so, where better to start with their first official output, 1972's Santa Dog. Maybe later we'll get to the demos made before 1972, but for now we're sticking to the official releases in the order that they were made public. Before I start, I'd like to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to all the contributors at the Meet the Residents Wiki, www.meettheresidents.fandom.com. Their research, along with others that I'll be naming as I go along, has been a true gold mine of information. According to 1993's Uncle Willie's Highly Opinionated Guide to the Residents, Santa Dog was recorded in October and November of 1972 and was released on December 20th, 1972, according to both Discogs and the booklet of Meet the Residents in Cherry Red Records' Preserved series. Santa Dog consists of two 45s in a hand silk screened and manufactured gatefold sleeve. The artwork for the project was designed by Homer Flynn under the name of his then newly founded graphics company, Porno Graphics. It was designed to look like a Christmas card from an insurance company with the name of the four songs illustrated in the inner sleeve, accompanied by the text, Season's Greetings from Residents Unincorporated. According to Ian Shirley's book, Meet the Residents, later revised and re-released under the name Never Known Questions, the cover of the set was inspired by a photo the group found when they moved into their building at 18 Sycamore Street in San Francisco which had previously been the office of a magazine called Western Kennel World, a magazine dedicated to dogs. Ian Shirley also revealed that the idea to base the project around a fictional insurance company stemmed from one resident having previously, supposedly, sold insurance. The set was a limited edition of roughly 500 copies, with roughly 100 being unusable due to mispressings and other unspecified reasons. Uncle Willie's book says that 400 copies were sent out to friends and enemies. Discogs and the Meet the Residents wiki say that 300 copies were sent out to friends, record companies, and celebrities of the time. A copy sent to then-President Richard Nixon was returned unopened, stamped, refused. A picture of this copy was used for 1999's limited edition CD, Refused, by Ralph America, and for the 2019 re-release by Clan Gallery of the same name. Another copy sent to Frank Zappa was also returned unopened because Zappa no longer lived at that address. Several copies of Santa Dog were shrink-wrapped before the varnish meant to seal the silk screening had properly dried, which led to them being torn apart when opened. Undamaged sleeves are extremely rare and most definitely one of the most hardest res collectibles to find. All sets were signed Santa Dog and Ralph on the cover and intentionally misnumbered. For instance, 000, 2 of 1, 88 of 88, etc. We'll get to the text in the inner sleeve when we get to the songs themselves. But before we get to the music, it should be stated that 145 has side A and side D on it and the other has sides B and C on it. As in, the first 45 has tracks 1 and 4, and the second 45 has tracks 2 and 3 on it. This has led to some confusion as to which song is which. To be more specific, the songs Explosion and Lightning have been mistaken for each other. But we'll get to that when we get to those tracks. It should also be stated that each song is attributed to a different fictional band, just as every song is credited to different fictitious songwriters. In reality, all the music was written and performed by the residents. As Ian Shirley put it in his book, it should be stressed that the residents did not exist at this time, but each person had their own group for the record 
and the membership of each band was the same. Confused yet? Good. I think that was the point. For the sake of clarity, I have decided to go from 45 to 45, starting with side A, track 1 of this collection, Fire, more commonly known as Santa Dog, thanks to its opening line, Santa Dog's a Jesus fetus. According to the 45, Fire is performed by Ivory and the Brain Eaters, and was written by Wanda Play. The guitar heard in the song is actually a sample of Peter Gunn, played by the instrumental rock band The Ventures. The song itself was the theme song for a popular TV show that ran from 1958 to 1960 in America. The song was later popularized by the 1980 movie, The Blues Brothers. The particular sample for Santa Dog was taken from an instructional LP titled Play Guitar with the Ventures Volume 7, which was released by Dalton Records or Dalton Records in 1967. That explains the line, the ventures appear courtesy of Dalton Records from the inner sleeve. Now the full pattern at normal speed. Side B, track 4 of Santa Dog, is titled Aircraft Damage and is, according to the inner sleeve, from the Ralph film Vileness Fats, coming soon to a theater near you. This explains why its performance is attributed to Arf and Omega, who are two characters from the movie. Why the track was supposedly written by B. Barnes and C. America, just as why Arf and Omega were accompanied by the singing lawn chairs, I have no idea. The inner sleeve states that the singing lawn chairs appear courtesy of San Mateo County, which sounds as if they were in prison there. Once again, I don't get it, and in all honesty, I don't think I'm supposed to. It's like all the inside jokes in the lyrics of Frank Zappa, or most of the work of David Lynch. It's meant to be taken at face value, and not necessarily to be understood. Now to the second 45 of the set, and the aforementioned confusion concerning the tracks Explosion and Lightning. I have the 1988 CD re-release on Torso Records of Meet the Residents. This, along with the East Side Digital CD of the same year, was the first digital release of the songs on Santa Dog. At least I think they were. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And for some reason, the song names were switched around. Just like the booklets of both CDs say that Meet the Residents was originally released in 1973, although the album was actually released on April 1st, 1974. Cherry Red rectified this mistake, and a simple look at the Santa Dog bonus tracks on each CD shows it. Here in 1988, Fire is followed by Lightning, and on Meet the Residents Preserved, Explosion is the name of the song after Fire. And so we continue with side C, track 2, named Explosion. This track opens with the melody of Jingle Bells, before it segues into completely different territory. The ending of this song incorporates another sample. This time the sample comes from the song Hunters of Heaven from Japanese musician Harumi's self-titled debut album which was released in 1968. The 45 states Delta Nu, that's a silent G, as the songwriter, and credits the Delta Nudes with the performance of the song. 
Delta Nu was a club founded by the people who would go on to become the residents and their management, the Cryptic Corporation, when they all met at college in Louisiana. The Delta Nudes, just like Ivory and the Brain Eaters, were one of the several names the group used before eventually settling on the name The Residents. The name The Delta Nudes was also used for a limited CD release of pre-Santa Dog tracks released by the Cryptic Corporation in 2013 and re-released by Clang Gallery with three additional tracks in 2016. Side D, track three of this set is titled Lightning. It is credited to fictitious songwriter M. Givens and a group of performers named the College Walkers. Again, any deeper meaning to these names eludes me. As Uncle Willie wrote, Next, we have Lightning, with the false security of its The Andy Griffith Show start, soon giving away to a reworking of Rhythmica No. 6, Tiempo de Rumba by Amadeo Roldan. The Andy Griffith Show was a sitcom in the 60s on US TV. Its theme song featured whistling, as does the beginning of Lightning. The reference to Amadeo Roldan clues us in to the last sample that was used for this project. There's one more line in the inner sleeve which simply reads artwork pornographics which we've already discussed, and Ralph Records and Pornographics are divisions of Residents Unincorporated, 18 Sycamore Street, Building, San Francisco, California, 94110, the phone number, and copyright 1972. It's interesting to see both Ralph Records and Pornographics referred to divisions of Residents on Inc. As far as I know, this is the only release to make use of Residents Unincorporated, at least the only musical release. Ralph Records was the Residents' own label, starting with Santa Dog, and according to Discogs, the last release on Ralph was 2014's limited edition double live CD, The Wonder of Weird. Again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Pornographic still provides the Residents with artworks to this day. There have been numerous spellings for the name, but that's a topic for a clip of its own. To categorize the music on Santa Dog is futile in my opinion. Discog states its genres and styles as electronic, rock, left field, avant-garde, and experimental. I guess that about sums it up. Or not. What do I know? To try to interpret the lyrics of Santa Dog is something I'll leave to philologists and psychologists of the future to get wrong. I wish them luck. But I would like to say that it is commonly known to Res fans that rearranging the letters in Santa Dog easily leads to Satan God. Is there deeper meaning to this? Only they know. The track Fire, better known as Santa Dog, has been revisited multiple times over the almost last five decades by the group. The last reworking of it was released in 2017, Santa Dog 45. But those are all releases in their own right, and so I'm not getting into them now. Not to mention that researching the set of 245s with only four tracks has been a trip into itself. Before ending this clip, I would like to say that Santa Dog was reissued in 2014 by Superior Viaduct. And for those of us who don't have an original, it is quite nice to have. If and when I continue this series, I will not be going into every reissue of every single release. I mean, come on, I do have a life outside of the residence, you know. Well, sort of. I would also like to say thank you to my good buddy Yanis for supplying me with this reprint of a Santa Dog sleeve. Sadly, this is not an original, but it is beautifully made, and Yanis... For this and so much more, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for tuning in to this episode of Res History. If you enjoyed what you see, please hit like and subscribe. Please share this on Facebook, on Twitter, and all that stuff. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, 
Instagram. And as always, you guys stay healthy and stay weird. Bye-bye now. In a hand silk screen and match of as Ian Shirley, Ian, I hope it's Ian and not Ian. For the sake of clarity, I have decided to go from 45 to 45, starting with side A, track one. And in all honesty, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think, therefore I am not. Did I make myself perfectly clear?